What is up everybody, it is Og here, back with another video, and in today's video, we are back in SM. If you've been watching my stream lately, which if you haven't checked out the stream, definitely come check out the stream, I have been doing a lot of SM farming because I'm leveling up to alts. Along with that SM farming, we've been theory crafting some new ideas and working with some people that have been in our chat to basically come up with some improved SM strategies. What are the biggest issues that people have in SM Cath? coming out of block and getting one shot? What's the biggest and getting slowed? What are the issues that people have in armory coming out of the block and there's a ton of resists and they can't handle them? Well, never have to worry about those issues again. We have two strategies where in Cath we don't even use ice block, so we don't need to worry about that. And we also use a different kind of pathing, ever so slightly different, that limits the amount of frost bolts that we're gonna take. And then in armory, we have a 1 in 10,000 chance that we're going to get resisted by a single mob. So pretty much we're not going to get resisted in armory anymore. This makes armory basically trivial at this point. The farm, it's incredibly, incredibly easy and much easier than Cath. And if you wanted to, you could do the old Cath strategy and not worry about this. But this strategy also allows you to kill the bosses in under 5 minutes for everything. All the mobs and all the bosses. We kill 190 mobs over the course of about 13 minutes between Cath, Armory, and Library, meaning that if we're going for the 30 lockout strategies, so four lockouts an hour, we can grind through this. And if you want to just go for Cath and Armory, we kill 160 mobs in about nine minutes, and it gets about 150,000 experience an hour. At level 36 which is more than double the xp needed to level so we're going to jump into this video very excited we're going to start off going through the talents requirements gear and everything like that and then we're going to jump into cath armory library let's get into it before we get started here i'm going to go over some of the things that you're going to need for this the specs the requirements as far as consumables and things like that i would highly recommend having engineering engineering for iron grenades gyro freeze ice reflector are incredibly helpful. As you can see, it basically reflects all frost spells for five seconds, which is gonna be really nice in Cathedral, but it's not necessary. Another thing I would highly recommend is to have the insignia of the Horde or the Alliance, basically to be able to get out of any slow effects. Slow effects are huge in Cath and can really mess up your run. And so you're gonna to wanna to be ready to use this and have this trinket if necessary. If not, you just need to make sure that you use Novas and Kona Colds to your advantage. And since we won't need Ice Block with the strategy, also you can use Ice Block with a Cancel Aura to basically get rid of any excess slows that you're getting. After that, I would get a couple pieces of Frost Resist gear. I wouldn't worry about the Fire Resist for SM Armory because it's not a big deal, but Cathedral with the slow, you want to get some Frost Resist. So I get two Frost Resist rings. I fortunately got this really early on into the expansion, so they're cheap but they might be a little bit more expensive for you. So you can go ahead and you can go over, I think there's a Frost Resist ring from BRD and I can't remember where this other one is. Maybe it's DM, I can't remember. But uh, you can find a couple Frost Resist rings and it's really easy just to get these and just get some base level Frost Resist. My gear isn't great, it's not bad, but it's basically some welfare pieces out of uh, MC and then just some blues and greens I got off the auction house. So you guys can use pretty much any blues and greens as long as it has intellect and stamina. You just wanna have as much intellect and stamina and that goes with most all farms that we're gonna be doing, as much of it as possible. Then lastly, here's the spec. This is the spec that I would recommend for this farm. That being said, there's also the comprehensive spec that you can use and I'll have that linked down below in the description as well. But basically we go through the frost tree, we skip over frostbite, winter's chill. We do not need elemental precision because the mobs are such a low level. That frees up a couple points for us to go over into arcane and make sure that we can get obviously five out of five magic absorption, get arcane resilience and get some arcane concentration as well. Comprehensive spec if you wanna go for it. This works for SM, ZG, Mara, and then obviously all the other lower ones as well, but it's not specifically tuned to any individual instance. So it's great, but it might not provide you the complete benefits that another spec would farm would provide. Rest of the things I would recommend, I would definitely recommend some heavy rune cloth bandages in case you need to bandage, some major healing potions, because those could be really nice, some lips, limited vulnerability potion, just in case of a last minute, oh crap kind of moment. 
and then maybe some free action potions if you decide to go that route with the strategy, which I'll talk about a little bit when we get started, and then the iron grenades if you're an engineer. After that, you're pretty much good to go and ready to rock and roll. All right, so here we are in SM. We do have two boosty tunes with us, our Laius Mage and Ogmun. Our Laius Mage is 35 and 70%. Ogmun is 18% into 36. They have about 1% to 2% rested XP just from sitting outside the instance last night, but it's going to be nothing compared to the XP that we're going to get, and so it's going to play a very, very little role. So you come into SM Cath, just like always, we're going to take out the first mob here. Basically, if the tunes are less than 31, I think they automatically aggro him just from proximity. So you just want to take him out real quick, just get used to doing it in case you have a lower level tune. From here, though, we are ready to go. And so we're going to get buffed up, get water made, and then start with the pool. All right, here we go. So I'm going to start the stopwatch. I want to make this as comprehensive as possible. So I'm going to be breaking down the individual little things you're going to want to do throughout the run so that you guys know exactly what to do. And that way you don't need to jump around to a bunch of different videos. So we pull those first two mobs, drag them in the any instance, and then we know about all the mobs. The idea there is that we want to aggro those mobs so they aggro some of the mobs while we're running forward here, but we want a head start. We don't want all the mobs to be right on top of us because we do have to go and open up this cathedral door. From here, we just run up to the cathedral door. Don't blink because if you blink, you're gonna be too far ahead of the mobs behind you, or you can just wait at the cathedral door, whichever you prefer. But you don't want to get too far ahead of the mobs, because if you get too far ahead of the mobs, they aren't going to be kind of in the right amount of distance to get a Nova in a little bit. Come to the Cathedral, run right through the middle, then veer off to the right. Typically you won't aggro that guy, but I aggroed him on accident. Get into Counterspell Range and Counterspell. You'll see that the majority of the mobs are skipping you. So hopefully you didn't aggro too many mobs just aggroing the boss, but the majority of the mobs skip you and run straight to help the boss. The rest of the mobs coming into the instance is why we waited. Are pretty close to us so we can just go ahead and nova them blink out of the instance and duck right now you want to duck right right outside of the door not the instance because you want to make sure that you're line of sighting all the frost bolts typically run around the left side of the tree i messed up and ran around the right it doesn't matter but you want to make sure you're line of sighting all the frost bolts at all times there's certain also windows kind of here you could say that we want to jump through now you want to follow these exact same jumping paths and that's because we're basically working with line of sighting as many frost bolts as you can and keeping an appropriate distance from the mobs. So you're going to see that I jump through nearly all of these openings to try to maximize my speed. We're also going to jump onto this ledge right here. And so as many people know, there's a future kind of reset spot where you can stand and bandage and things like that. And I'll show that in a sec. This is actually also a reset spot. So if the run is ever going horrible, this is a reset spot you can use, basically just stand up on that ledge, the mobs will reset in 10 seconds, or you could bandage or evocate or whatever you need to do. Hopefully this early in the run, you won't need to jump. This corner, however, you do not want to jump through. Basically the mobs are right here, right behind us, and they're in a perfect kind of distance where they're not gonna get off a ton of frost bolts and things like that. But if we jump through this window, they're gonna be able to hit us with frost bolts. They're also gonna cut the corners and it's gonna be bad. You wanna force them into this pathway. So you actually run around this bottom right perimeter and then blink up the pathway immediately. This is gonna keep the mobs pretty far behind you. A lot of them are gonna be stuck in the corridor and it's gonna get you some extra little space. And you can see here that we only get hit with one frost bolt. That's kind of a dangerous spot right there too. From here, we jump up through the window, we blink and then we turn around while running forward. So if you guys didn't see the most recent video on basically just general tips for AOEing, it's kind of how to set up your camera and everything so we can do that. So we just continue running forward while looking behind us and we place a rank one blizzard. This rank one blizzard is basically just gonna slow down the mobs, allow them to kind of coalesce a little bit more and group up, and then we jump outside the window. Because we did that blizzard, a lot of the mages actually went into that corner, so you can see we're getting a lot less frost bolts than normal. Veer left, and we're gonna blink across. Now here's where you can pop your guy or freeze ice reflector. I did not do it because for the purpose of the video, I wanted to make it so that everybody could do this farm, but if you are an engineer, definitely pop your guy or freeze ice reflector here and it's gonna help a ton. But then you actually run up onto this ledge and you jump off right next to this lion statue. Now the reason for this is that the rest of the mobs are running up here. They're gonna follow you up to the top here and then they're gonna to have to backtrack to try to get down to you on the ledge. So you're gonna notice that I don't even use ice block anymore. But what I actually do is get them into the perfect blizzard spots just from jumping off that ledge. Now we're not worrying about taking damage from the ice block. And the bigger benefit is Mograine right here can stun. And so if Mograine stuns you, coming out of the ice block, you're pretty much dead. 
The other alternative is to pop a free action potion before going into the ice block. And then with the free action potion on, you can't get stunned, so you know that you're gonna be safe coming out of the ice block. Just costs a little bit more, probably a little bit easier when you're first getting started, so you can use that strategy, but this works pretty well. The idea here is that we're jumping back and forth every single time Mograine gets to us, because we don't wanna run the risk of getting stunned. And we also wanna get enough damage out onto these mobs to be able to keep damaging them as much as possible, and he can break down our shields pretty quick. You'll also see though that I'm facing away from him. So Mograine, as I said, can stun, and if he stuns, we don't want to have to blink into the rest of the mobs because that's probably going to cause a death. So you can either face towards the right, towards the left, or behind you, but never face towards the mobs with Mograine up. Outside of right here, obviously, because most of the mobs are pretty low, so I'm not too worried about it. That being said, I don't have backpedal bound to any keys because I got rid of backpedal. So I face away, and then I can blink if I get stunned. Now you're gonna see that I drag Mograine up here onto the grass. This is purely to show you guys things. So this is costing me about 10 seconds in my run, but it's purely to show you what you need to do if you wanna kill the bosses. By killing Mograine up on the grass, this actually causes White Mane to run out and try to help. So here, if we were gonna kill White Mane and kill the bosses, we actually wouldn't kill these sorcerers. We'd leave them up so we have unlimited mana, maybe kill some of them, but leave up the rest. But you can see in a second here that White Mane's gonna come out here. White Mane runs all the way over to Mograine, Res is Mograin, and then you just basically go back through the normal kind of kill order that you normally would. You can actually go jump back and forth over this ledge with White Mane and Mograin at the same time, and that is actually a great way to make it so you don't take any hits from Mograin, and you're able to get down White Mane and Mograin at the same time. Farm is honestly much, much easier to do it this way. It's going to take a lot of practice to kind of get used to doing the rank 1 Blizzard, but once you get down the rank one blizzard, it's gonna be pretty easy to be able to get those mobs down. I wanna point out a couple things before we jump past this. First, this second spot right here, after we blink through here, we get the rank one blizzard. This ledge right here is the other reset spot. So as many of you know, if you jump up here, you can bandage, evocate, and you're out of line of sight of these mobs, which is great. This rank one blizzard though is very helpful because what you're gonna see is at the very back of these mobs, there's gonna be some sorcerers, you can tell by the fire shields and everything coming up. They are now placed within that corridor where they're not gonna be able to cast the frost bolts as frequently. That's why we're not getting hit as much. So it's very important to do that blizzard. Also, you wanna run far to the right because now you can see the sorcerers are trying to catch up to us. So they gave up on their current frost bolts that they're casting and they're trying to run all the way over to us. So make sure that you run far enough to the right. Then when you blink, you're obviously not gonna get hit by a ton or if you get slowed right here, you're still in you know range to be able to just jump off really easily this blizzard is the last important thing i want to touch on you want to hold the first blizzard until the front mobs are at about 2.5 to 3 seconds left it should hit the majority of the mobs and maybe there's a couple stragglers at the end that come up and hit you but they're going to get clumped up later but then you want to move forward you want to move forward for about a second and then place the blizzard again you can see that this blizzard is going at a 7.1 out of 8 seconds left remaining, so I know that's going to tick in 0.1 seconds. And then the blizzard on the front mob has 1 second left, so I know that they're going to get the blizzard reapplied with the slow. Once they get to me, I jump down, apply ice barrier so that Mograine can't just hit through my shields, get the blizzard going again in the corner, and just keep on rinsing and repeating back and forth getting that blizzard going. Okay, so now we have SM Cath down. You can see it's about 4 minutes and 30 seconds in. And now we're going to go over to Armory. Now it's going to take me a couple extra seconds every single time I switch instances to drag my two tunes. So you can save a little bit of time, you know, comparatively from, from this run. But you can see just how quick this is in general. So I'm dragging my tunes over. We're going to get into Armory. Once we get into Armory, Armory has typically been a place where a lot of people have issues. They have a lot of issues because if you get resist coming out of the ice block, the basically the mobs are just going to cause a ton of pains. And there's a lot of defenders that can basically interrupt you. And it's just not a good time. Fortunately, with this new strategy, shout out to Mogan from my channel and Twitch basically recommended this. We don't even need to worry about it at all. And there's not a single chance that we're going to get a resist. Okay, there is. There's a 1 in 10,000 chance that we're going to get a resist from a mob. So definitely could still happen. You know, we could also win the lottery. But probably is not going to happen. Or if it does, it's just going to be one mob and you can polymorph it to handle it right 
So what we're going to do in Armory is we're going to get started just like normal. You take out these first two mobs, just take them out because, again, they're going to aggro from proximity, and you can't really grab them later, so definitely just take them out just so you're not worrying about them. From here, we want to sprint basically to the end of the instance. Now, you're going to see some evoker pats along the way. They could potentially be in your way. Don't worry too much if you do aggro them. Obviously, it's better if you can avoid them just with a little side movement, but don't sit there wasting 20 seconds just trying to avoid them. I blink there basically to cause leeway to not aggro that evoker. But this evoker running behind this candle, if you run behind the candles, they can't aggro you from there. So I'm doing a little drink ticking as I run up. But also, if you aggro them, any time that there is a ledge that is high up in the air, so behind cannons especially, right over here you can see this ledge right here behind these cannons, that is a reset spot. So if you aggro mobs, just jump up onto this, wait there, then you can drink right there, and then just get to the end of the instance. But I see this evoker here, so I'm just going to drink back up to full. You want to start off the run with Ice Barrier, Mana Shield, and Fire Ward, and your goal is to get to the end of the instance without taking too much damage and losing too much mana. As long as you use a tight pathing and cut as closely as possible, it shouldn't be a problem at all. But make sure that you only Nova in a certain spot that we Nova. So we're going to come out of there. We're going to pull those first mobs. Kona Cold Rank 1, those mobs right there, come around the side. And then we're just using Arcane Explosion to pull the mobs at a decent distance from them. So you can see we pass the pack before we Arcane Explosion it. This is going to cause you to take a little bit less damage, and so we're going to save a little bit of damage. After we come around this bend, so you can see it's the fourth one down the bottom, we're going to Arcane Explosion to aggro the group on the right, and then we're going to blink straight across here. This is going to get you some distance from the mobs. This is the only place then where you reapply Ice Barrier until the very end. If you get past this point and you're still chilling with full barrier, don't waste reapplying it because you might not have it for the kill phase, and you're going to want to have it for the kill phase. But then we just come here and we just go literally diagonally towards the stairs. And you can notice that we're pulling every single pack, even though we're running perfectly diagonally, with Arcane Explosion. So it can reach every single one of these packs. Counterspell the mob at the back. So right before we get to the stairs, there's this little pack over there in the corner. They typically have a chest as well. Make sure you target this guy, counterspell him, and then you Nova right after this. That gets the mobs right off of you, gives you a little bit of distance to where you can get out into the open over here. And then we hug left left around the side and this is good actually to run along the outside perimeter i didn't really run along the outside perimeter but it's going to help when you first get started because it forces the mobs to follow to the outside as well here again i'm not staying too close to the inner side because those mobs could hit me and so i'm kind of running along the outside you could do jump turn cone of colds if you'd like but it's important that you basically juke the second pack of mobs right there so you just blink right past them reapply barrier reapply mana shield get into the corner and block facing the mobs so now, obviously, this is a different block spot. Why are we here? We're here because we now have a straightaway where we can basically blizzard these mobs down. And additionally, because we don't need to go for the Flame Strike Cone of Cold double pattern like normal, we can use our Cold Snap when we come out of this block. So what we're going to do is we're going to Nova, Cold Snap, Nova. Now make sure you're using a cancel or a macro because if you don't use a cancel or a macro, you're not going to come out of the block quick enough. So that's just slash cancel aura space ice place block. Basically, the game is going to render you coming out of ice block slower unless you use that macro. So make sure you use that or else you're going to take a lot of damage. But use the cancel aura, get the Nova, cold snap, Nova again. Nova, cold snap, Nova. You can see there's one mob who resisted my first Nova, but he did not resist the second Nova. Again, 1 in 10,000 chance, and so I just get started with my Blizzard. Even if one mob resists, as long as it's not a defender, you don't need to worry because they can't interrupt you, and so you can just tank them with your shields. Ice Barrier and Mana Shield. You're going to have full Ice Barrier and full Mana Shield because we use Cold Snap, right? So when we're running away, we reapply those shields, and then we just Blizzard, and at the end of each, each Blizzard, we take about two steps forward and then start Blizzarding again. After three Blizzards, we jump Nova, now it's important that you jump because the jump is going to allow you to extend leeway and hit some extra mobs in the back. Step over to the side, flame strike. While you're doing flame strike, mobs are running towards you, and then jump Kona Cold, and then just spam Arcane Explosion. And you can see the only mob that's really alive at this point is the mob that was right on top of me. The rest of the mobs are going down real easy. Now, might be good to reapply Mana Shield right after that, just so you're not taking damage. You can use Iron Grenades if you want to. I wasn't too worried about it, so I just kind of ran face forward into the mobs and started doing some damage. But you can basically see how much easier this strat is. You don't have a chance to resist because you're using the cold snap. 
for the Nova. So you're getting two Novas. So you have a one in 100 times one in 100, so one in 10,000 chance of a resist. And you have three blizzards that are basically lasting the full duration, doing a ton of damage to these mobs so that you're able to go ahead and keep on cruising. You can see here, nine minutes, 25 seconds. We have both of these runs down. If you just want to do Cather Armory, it's 162 mobs on average. And you can see here, 150,000 experience per hour in this session. 150,000 experience per hour. I need about 70,000 experience per level, 71,600. So it is less than 30 minutes a level with this strategy in the mid 30s. This is insane, guys. Don't go to Mara early. Don't go to Mara at 30. Stay here until you're at least 38. Then you can go do the Mara Big Pools. You can see here 150,000 experience per hour. It was probably 160 based on how it's decreasing right now after we actually killed the mobs. Rinse and repeat that five times every hour if you want. Tons of experience. Very, very safe. Low chance of dying. If you're going to die, it's going to be in Cath. And so if you feel more comfortable using a free action potion, use a free action potion. But if you're going for the 30 lockouts, now you have an extra couple minutes, right? Because we can basically reset every 15 minutes if we want to do four per hour to get to avoid lockout, but maximizing our XP. So we can go over to library. Again, same kind of thing. It's taking me a couple extra seconds because I'm dragging tunes with me, but we can go over to library and we can pull these first packs. Now I will say that I got the worst RNG in library I think I've ever had in my entire life. And if you've been watching the streams, I haven't died in library, period. But I want to show you what happens here. And I left in this clip because it's just hysterical what happens. And so I want to show you. But to start off the library pool, we're going to pull that first pack with the wand, then blink down the hallway. Now there is a pack of dog plus houndmaster. It's important that you pick them up because you don't want them to be straggling later on. So make sure that you face pull them or you can pull them with a fire blast or something like that and then blink down the hallway. We then go grab one of Houndmaster Lucky's dogs. You just run near it. You might have to jump if you're a gnome or probably probably just a gnome just to be able to reach over kind of like the ledge that's inside the boss's room to pull them. But you can counterspell this guy. And you can see here, I get stunned. So here's the risk of these mobs. The gallants have basically hammer justice, which can stun you. It's a 1% chance to happen. But for some reason, it happened to me a ton. You can see I get stunned again. <laughs> And I'm just like, what? <laughs> but I live here, I get the cone of cold going, and this is not gonna be pretty. It's not gonna be pretty. But basically, you take a wide route, you go into this room. You're basically trying to get all these mobs just stacked up into this room. So typically you just wait in this room, hang out here. Once all the mobs come in, you get the Nova, you make sure you're facing out of this door so you can blink if you need to, and I got stunned in the worst possible spot. Right as I was about to Nova, and I died. So we got back into the run and we were just getting ready to go, but you can see the timer, I stopped it at 11 minutes and 21 seconds. And I'm gonna have a separate kind of library clip just to show you how long the library run would take, but it's about three minutes. And so if you add that on to the nine minutes, 20 seconds, we're looking at about 13 minute clears without Zanza pots and not killing bosses. If you wanna kill the calf bosses, you're looking anywhere between 15 minutes a run to 17 minutes a run. And so you can see that you can easily do for an hour, hit the lockouts on an hourly basis and maximize your XP. But same kind of thing here, we're going in, we target one of the dogs, aggro them, jump over the ledge, and I still have bad RNG. I'm pretty sure that the patch yesterday that lasted about six hours was actually basically just to change the RNG so that as a 60, you could get stunned by mobs because look at it, I'm still getting stunned. I If you've been watching the stream the past several days while I've been doing it, look at this, another stun. I haven't been getting stunned at all, yet here... I'm <laughs> just getting stunned constantly. So as you can see, get out of there fine because it was only a couple of stuns. And now we're working towards our kill phase. Now, typically you'd want to have a ice barrier, but obviously I got stunned in a bad place. So I lost my ice barrier. But you come over into this corner, reapply any shields you do have. And right when the first mob's going to get to you, you go for the block. So we now have the first three rooms of mobs coming towards us. When the last mob gets to us, we cancel aura, step away, Nova. So cancel aura, Nova, and step away. If one mob resists, you sheep it. If two mobs resist, you can tank one, it's fine. But then we get to maximum distance and we get the max rank blizzard going. So here you can see we're taking them down. 
because they are a lower level than the other instances, they actually die a lot easier. And so three blizzards is gonna cause them all to run. And so if you want, you can go ahead and use an iron grenade on them, basically just to keep them grouped so they don't go too all over the place, but of course I get stunned. And so when I go for the Nova, it breaks them out and then I take a little bit of damage, but you don't even need to do that. If you just wanna go for the Nova and then Kona Cold, that is perfectly fine as well. You do not need engineering for this part at all. Make sure you take out Howmaster Loxy though, because he actually does do a good amount of damage to you. The rest of the mobs aren't too bad. He can be nova though, so Shatter Combos are a big thing to be able to take him out. But like I said, this takes about three minutes, and so I'll show you a sped up kind of library clip where we're basically going through the same thing. Again, bad RNG, but we're able to get it down in about three minutes. Overall, the entire thing taking about 15 minutes, and even with my death that I had, so even with a death, and our run back, so obviously taking a lot more than 15 minutes, my hunter still averaged over 100,000 experience per hour, unrested. So as I said, I ran right back into armory, did the same exact kind of pool. So we'll skip to the, towards the guild phase. So I'm coming back out, aggro up all the mobs. You can see I did take a lot of damage. I did get no, stunned a bunch of different times. Again, crazy RNG, but I get my full ice barrier, full mana shield, so I'm, I'm sitting pretty well going into the block except for the fact that I realize I don't have block and I don't have cold snap because I just ran right back into the instance after recording the first part. And this was where I kind of had to improvise a little bit. So I immediately started running away. I was like, all right, well, I'll get the iron grenade going behind me just to get them grouped up. And then as the last mobs get there, I'm going to drop down my Nova 30% health. So fortunately you can see the ice barrier does tank a lot in library because the mobs are a decently low level. And then I'm able to get the blizzard started. However, they are casting holy spells on me, which break through the, the well, I don't have ice barrier. So basically it's avoiding my mana shield because it's a holy spell. And so I constantly am getting interrupted. However, we're able to get enough damage going on these mobs where I can basically get the mobs low enough. I go for four blizzards instead of three, just because I am at 19% health and I don't want to risk getting too low. But now I'm focusing on getting down the mobs mana shield, is is done it gets tapped and so i reapply it again get the nova get the kona cold fortunately i don't get stunned right there else that probably could have been the end get down to four percent reapply my everything uh with a cold snap and a ice barrier nova and then focus on getting down hand monster loxy as i said before because he does the most damage take him out and you can see that we were able to get through the entire library in about two minutes and 18 seconds now, obviously, if it was a little bit cleaner, probably could have been a little bit faster, but that's plenty fast for me. And you can see that we could do all three runs in well under 15 minutes per set. All right, everyone, that wraps up today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you did, please subscribe and leave a like and a comment below to let me know so. And if you guys have any other ideas for any other videos, please let me know in the comments below. Also, check out the description for the Twitch where I do all this live. And also for my Twitter and Discord where you guys can be notified of any future updates and when I'm going to go live on stream. So I'll see you guys in the next video.